Hi, Dana Martin here from Unschooling America to answer some questions that I received recently about unschooling. After my video that I did last night, I had a couple posts, a couple of <clears throat> posts after the video, and a question from my new friend Ryan, so I want to answer those. Um, one of the, one of the uh, pr people that posted a question, or posted a comment, I should say, after my last video, they said that they didn't see anything wrong with children being in, you know, around a lot of other kids, like hundreds of other kids. Well, I think there's a lot to learn about unschooling in this mindset of respectful, peaceful parenting. <clears throat> now there's not necessarily anything wrong in children being around hundreds of other kids, you know, if the child's like willingly and wanting and enjoying that situation. When it's like a bad thing is when the child doesn't want to be in that situation. So there's no like one answer for every single child. And this type of life, you're able to totally cater to that individual. And I think also as a culture, we really tend to think that we know what's best for people, that we know what's best for children, we know what's best for our neighbor, we know what's best for other countries, and it's just kind of a cultural thing that, you know, we know what's best and we really, like, push our opinions on people. Um, and I, I, this mindset is really kind of uh, individualized in that, I, you know, we listen to our children. We know what's going to be best for them because they tell us. And that's definitely something outside the, the norm of our culture, especially the way most of us were raised. And, and also, I think, like, you know, we were told growing up that it's good for you to do this and it's good for you to do that. And, and you really learn to silence your own inner knowledge about things. And you say, all right, well, I guess I don't really know that's bad. And I'll learn to trust this other person and listen to them over my own instinct. Now, I, I love that I can listen to my kids. So I don't think there's one right answer that, um, that it's good for children to be around hundreds of other kids. It's just not a bad thing. It's not a good thing. It's just totally individual with that particular child. And the same is true with learning in general you know, in, in different topics. Now I'm going to go right into the question that Ryan asked. He, um, I'm going to kind of jump around with this question, but he put, put, you know, wouldn't it be good to introduce a little Greek into the equation? That she, uh, he imagines that the schools of Socrates um, would be like a really good thing to, to teach to children or to get out there. Now again, I think, hey, I'm really interested in that. I love Plato and I love, um, I love uh, Greek history and so forth, but that's just me. So it's one of those things, Ryan, like when you have kids, or if you have kids, I'm not really sure. But um, if you think that would be a cool thing to bring into their lives, you can do what's called strewing. You can, which is where you just like put interesting things in your children's paths. Now, some unschoolers do that, some don't. For me, I really like to do that if I think something's cool. So get a couple books, get a couple, you know, uh, magazines. Uh, talk to them. Discussions. One of the biggest ways that unschoolers learn is just to to share with them. Oh, this is really cool. You know, there's there's so many awesome things on the History Channel. I mean, <clears throat> you know. Basically, it's kind of like throwing Greek out there, and in our day and age with technology, it's kind of hard not to, not to run into it and just see where, you, where your child's interested with it. If they think it's interesting, then hey, you take off with it. You you bring as much of that into their life as possible, and if they're interested, then they can learn from it. If they're not, then hey, maybe they will be later in life. But it's kind of not pushing your own agenda, even though you think something's really important for them to know. It's not pushing that on them. It's respecting uh, where they're at with it and and. Uh, sharing your passion for it. I mean, sometimes our passions are so infectious to our own children that, hey, if you're interested in, in you know, Greek history, for example, and you think it's important in life, then share, share with them why. Um, another thing you kind of, let's see, another thing you asked where it was, I'm reading it on the screen here in front of me, um, <clears throat> that maybe, you know, um, somebody might be on board with unschooling, but both parents might work, or are single and working. That's really common. Now, there's a lot of other, there's a lot of different um, Yahoo groups out there um, that are kind of catered to this. There's a few newer ones. <coughs> if you did a search, you could you could probably find them. But there's there's also something as an alternative called a um, Sudbury School. Now I know there's even Sudbury School videos on YouTube, so you could search for it. But a Sudbury School is a free school, so it's basically like unschooling, but in a school you know in a school in a building if both parents are working. It's an awesome, awesome way to go about it. A lot of people go from like Sudbury to unschooling. So Sudbury schools are free schools. They're, they're called democratic schools and children get to, uh, there's no grades, um, there's tons of resources and they're together. So, you know, together all day um, in groups and there's books and computers. And um, I just hear that they're really great as an alternative. So a Sudbury school would be a great alternative for somebody that totally is respectful, you know, and they're parenting and peaceful and, and really would love to unschool, but, but there's no parent home and they have young children. And I know there's Sudbury schools, I think it's kind of spreading as well. I think they came out, you know, they came out 
in the 60s or 70s and they were popular and they kind of took a dip and now I think they're coming back up again in their popularity. So do a search for Sudbury schools and you'd be really surprised. So, And also there are a lot of people who, who you know, both parents work and they switch off their, their you know, one works nights, one work days, and they, and they unschool totally perfectly. So, I mean, there's a lot of ways to go about it. Um, but that's a really great question and a really common question. And also, you asked Ryan, um, how do I feel about unschooling groups? Well, we have, you know, I've had an unschooling group called the Free Child Home Learners, where kids get together for like unstructured play and to hang out, and, and also we're part of a regular homeschooling group with all different types of homeschoolers. And I love um, that we have like a rich pantry of different people in our lives, of all different backgrounds, all different homeschooling methods, because I want my children to be, um, as much as I love being around totally like-minded people, because it makes me feel really good, there are those times where I also really think it's important um, for my family. I like to be around all different people with all different backgrounds. So, um, you know, uh, maybe like you, you put, um, for having children study under a guidance of one like director or under one person, hey, I'm all for that if it's something the children child wants to do. So it could just be a resource, um, but nothing forced. And, and uh, if the child doesn't want to be there, then it's not going to do any good as far as their learning is concerned and so forth. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's there's no limits with unschooling. It's anything you could even think of, and it's kind of like a, um, it's a mutual respect. It's like coexisting and respecting. So, so all these questions you ask are totally doable, as long as, you know, everybody involved, you and your child, are mutually wanting to be part of it all. You know, unschooling isn't not, isn't, um, not doing anything schoolish. It's, it's totally just respecting a, a, a child's uh, wishes. So, um, it's not not having workbooks, it's not not having textbooks. If your child is interested in those kind of things and they want those in their lives, you can offer them. And um, it's still in schooling if they, um, if they want to use those. The same with classes. I mean, a lot of people like the structured classes. A lot of kids love to do that. You know, I took Devin to the Boston Museum of Science and we did like a science class there one day and he loved that. So unschooling is not uneducating. It's just just the whole mindset of res no forced learning and respecting a child and knowing that they're going to learn best in a scenario where they're kind of, um, they're leading their education, they're making the choices. You're not saying, okay, this is important for you to know because I think you should or somebody else think thinks you should. So um, there's so many different opinions, but it comes down to trusting children and I listen to what my kids like and what they enjoy and what they dislike and uh, I follow their lead and uh, I love being their facilitator and offering them different things, and uh, we just love to live a happy life. And uh, anyway, well, thanks, Ryan, for your questions. Those were great. And uh, if anybody has any more, please email them on over to me. I love having a focal point for my uh, for my YouTube videos. So I hope that was helpful to a few people. And uh, yeah, we'll talk soon. Thanks.